Hi guys, soon you will have this too. What is this? This R2D2. I have been installing it, well, over 50 times maybe. So I thought, what the heck? Why do not? Why why not record what I do? Uh, so this is a clean installation of Arch Labs. And what do you do afterwards? Well, I've done already something. I was checking if uh, the, la the, la the last uh, changes were implemented, and I just clicked here. So this is variety. So I have a nice wallpaper. You can do it with your shortcuts as well. A super arrow to the left, arrow to the right. Sorry, not super, but Alt. Alt to the left, Alt to the right. Alt is up is stay frozen. This wallpaper is for today. And Alt arrow down is you can move every five minutes or so, depending on the, of the settings you have here, the preferences. So what do I do when I install a new system? Well, I um, first of all, I use Vivaldi. So Ctrl-Alt-V is uh, me starting off Vivaldi. And as you can see, I set everything already, meaning I load all my tabs that I keep in track that I follow. Okay, so that's one. Two, I've installed LastPass, uh, which is going to keep my 500 websites with all their very, very difficult um, uh, passwords and logins. It's all in there. I don't know which which password it is. It's just last pass that fills it in. And the same company provides also these bookmarks. So all the bookmarks are kept online. So when I reinstall the computer, I just go get last pass, go get X marks, and I have everything to log in and my uh, URLs are there. So that's uh, something I do. Well, then um, mostly I'll go to my Google Drive since I don't have InSync yet and I have my Arch Labs here and I'll get my start there's a folder called start and I say download this one I have to say always save it's safe and we get this here confirm keep yes keep and then download you have I've been doing this for I don't know how much time forever it seems so now we have these two scripts. These two scripts is what's going to help me. So I go to the downloads. These two scripts are going to help me. I'm going to move them. I'm going to put them Control H. I'm going to make a new folder. One is called data, which is my personal data. Control V. And that's this line. Let's open it a little bit. Check if in my home folder there is a data on Tergal Cinnamon. If there is no folder, if there is no directory, then you're going to git clone it from my GitHub. Then you're going insights. If there is one, well, sorry. So if, if it is available, if it's not available, you do this and otherwise CD. And then this is updating. Pull it, pull it. So for instance, I switch computers, I have two, three computers, I work and on some codes and I push it to GitHub, then when I come to another computer I have to pull it. So that's what this thing does. It's going to pull everything from the internet so I have the latest of the last version. So this is a small script, I'm uh, happy to share if you want to have it, or if you do anyway a template like, but of course my URLs are not interesting, but for yourself. So this is data, so I'm going to run this. Problem is, it's coming from Google Drive, so I have to tell them it's a program. Yes, I have to tell that to the other one as well, so I've done this hundreds of times. Okay, now we can go ahead. And then we say update, so get me everything from the net. Let's see how it's called, data. And let's put this away. So he's doing his job. He's going to download everything from the net. And the same applies for Arch Labs. There's also a lot of GitHubs there. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna let him work as well. So that's easier, meaning I don't have to go one by one uh, to the internet and do a Git clone and all that. No, no, I'm getting my software, my, my, my tools, my GitHubs automatically. That's one thing. So 
Let's wait for that to happen. What else? What can we do in the meantime? We like probably to change our themes. You can change conkeys. Well, let's first start from the top to the bottom. Probably I'm gonna change my appearance, as you've maybe seen already in tutorials. I like it a little bit bigger. I've seen that 12 is nice and this is an 11 and what you get, a menu that's a bit bigger. Better for my eyes. Close. That's that. No more to be set in that one. Then a conky. Well, yeah, if I like to have a conky, then I could, for instance, try this one, which is uh, the last one. But, well, what will you see? Well, Variety just changed my wallpaper, didn't do a thing. That's Variety working up there. But it will not work because I've got to see, have to mention, have to think that we cannot run at this point in time anything with Lua at the end. So we have to install Packer, Conky, Lua and one of the choices will work on your hardware. Depending on the hardware you have to choose right. So all the, all the Lua things is a no-go. We'll install it later. Let's install the skeleton. Ah, there it is. So now we have a Conky at the back side here. And we have some information available. So, uh, what else probably? That was my intention anyway, to change some colors around. So this is the Bunsen Dark, which is uh, our tribute to Bunsen Labs. But if you don't want that, then you can just choose any of all these themes. So there are lots of themes, and I think I'm gonna go just for well, mostly I take dark ones, so let's take a light one this time. Against my nature. Sadimon and Numix, why not? Mouse cursor, pre snow, window border. Arc, Numix darker. Apply. How does that look? This looks nice. Why not this one? Close. In the meantime, this is finished. That's done. He's still working, and that's Arch Labs that's still downloading. So here you will see still uh, folders popping up, being downloaded. Oh yeah, I already changed menus, so this is no longer the the general menu.xml. The only thing I did to achieve this is just switch names. Um, you can go to here. You should have you should have the config. And then open box, and we changed the. This one is actually was the menu .xml, and this one was called menu dash ob menu generated. I think so. We recalled the ob menu generated to menu .xml, and the original one to menu dash or from original. And then, if you don't know the shortcut, which is Ctrl Shift Backspace, what I did then is tell Openbox, come on, reload, restart Openbox, and then you have this menu. A lot of more choices. You see, we installed a lot more than we have just in our uh, XML menu, standard and menu XML. But most of the things, let's be honest, we don't need it. But anyway, so this is every application that's on the system. Okay, that's that. Um, what else? So that's new, so you might have wondered why I have OB menu generator in here. So for instance, we can generate a menu with icons and it's going to make all these icons. Uh, I don't personally like it. Uh, first of all, it's making me it's slow if you do a pipe menu. If you're making a static menu, then it's a little bit faster, as you can see, it reacts faster. But, well, even though I make these Sardi and Servant icons, I really like it like this, clean and fast. Okay, colors, other colors. We have our file manager, and that's Tunar, and Tunar is part of XFCE, so we have to tell him, look guy, I changed, I went to this one. And let's do for the icons as well here. Sardi Mononumix, was it this one? I think so. I don't know. 
the only new mix I have. Huh? And then fonts, a little bit bigger. Settings, close. Now this looks ugly, don't mind it. Now teach you another shortcut, super shift enter. And there you go, now it's white in the background and that's more beautiful. Talking about shortcuts. Um, we definitely need something to show you guys what I'm pressing. So, no, not here. We go to data. On my GitHub, there is this thing Arch Labs Nemesis. And that's actually the idea um, to tell you those to tell you that, that this is available and this is what I do after installation of any Arch Labs. So extra software, extra fonts, extra stuff. Spotify, for instance, not on the ISO, why it's a paid service and so on. So no, um, you have to install it later. Team Viewer also for technical guys. So, so stuff that's not on the ISO, I keep it on the GitHub and I'm downloading it and I'm running it. Now what I need to do first is this one install screen key I'm gonna do it like this um, install screen key that's done eh? okay now it can be closed pressing super 6 and pressing super 4 asking my password super shift D up there I'm running screen key. We have a little program now. Preferences to one, shift, close, control, alt, T, and now you see what I'm pressing. So, what I'll do next is go over every package and think will I install it or not. No? I've added this little thing on my GitHub. This is going to put all my fonts that I need for Arch Labs in the hidden folder and your home folder dot fonts. No? So that's an interesting aspect or you download them one by one which is okay no problem or you just press this button. So done everything is inside. And where is it now? It's now in Eric in fonts and these fonts have been copied over and they will work on any Conky that you would like to have, like for instance the bootcamp. Let's try that one. Let's make this smaller like that. Up, gone. Scroll up, scroll down. Um, so fonts. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, conkeys, but for, for uh, the fonts to check, I have to have a conky. Let's see if I can recall which one it is. I want to have the one with text I believe it's this one all any text any font you just type the text and there it goes so indeed the font is ready otherwise it wouldn't be so beautiful yeah? this is a bootcamp font I think it is it's a very beautiful font so that's it it works sure it does we've done only one of them so next up is we're going to install the fastest arch service around so he's going to check out what's in the neighborhood gonna ping it or download it i don't know and then it's gonna make a nice list and sort them from top to bottom and there you go that's done extra software that i want to install after installation of the iso is for instance, Baobab is a way to figure out how many gigabytes are in a folder. Uh, from time to time you say, oh, my hard disk is almost full, how is that possible? And then you let loose this little program and it's going to say, ah, you forgot there is a Blu-ray there. Ah, okay, right. So those things, dark table, yeah, temperature, screen fetch is another alternative than NeoFetch. You just check them out, what they are. And in the meantime, it's already installed. Conky Aureola is a bit not necessary. It's my personal conkeys that I've put and gathered on GitHub. We conkeys enough, and the best of them, of the Aureola conkeys, are inside 
arch slabs, so no. Won't install it. The Atom is um, good to install. There's only one problem. Um, it's a very long one. So I'm gonna try something. I believe there's another one. Let's go up, down, up, down. So Atomics created another one, looking for Atom, but not like this one. I believe this is the one that's the, the bin. Oh, where am I looking? Here. So editor bin. This takes a while to build. So I'm gonna take number 11 and see how that goes. As you can see, it's 300 megabytes, but downloading and installing 300 megabytes or building 300 megabytes is something completely different. So let's see how fast this is, so I know. I'm glad I did. Finished. So this is just another version of Atom. Then my printer, that's something you should not install, of course. But this is going to be my PC for the coming six months. So yeah, I'm going to install my Canon. You wouldn't know how many test pages I have, just to know the installation went OK. I use it to write things down. Problem solved. There it is. A bit slow today. The, our AUR package. So these things come from the AUR, Arch User Repository. And even sometimes you can get an, a downtime so that uh, you get errors and nothing works. So that's possible too. It's a website like any other website. It's a vul vulnerable to, I don't know, attacks or shutdowns or maintenance or stuff like that. While he's doing that, because he's taking so much time, and I'm gonna tell him, uh -huh, he's gone, there he is. Yeah. Let's install Dropbox. Then GNOME screenshot, you would, you might think we have enough. We have Scrot, we have XFC uh, screenshot, uh, screen shooter. Uh, why this one? Because the GNOME screenshot can make images in GPG. And if you compare it in megabytes and kilobytes, that's uh, about 1000 to 10. So it's, um, for me, for website building, better to have a GPG than a PNG. So that's the reason why I will install GNOME Screenshot anyway. Okay, Dropbox. And I'm gonna install GNOME, GNOME Shot. Sometimes you can do what I'm doing now. Most of the time you get screwed because you get a database block or something like that. But voila, let's, let's try it out. So another shortcut. That went to the top and that went to the bottom. So, GNOME screenshots. Mm -hmm. Let's install the radio, some music. You never know when it comes in handy. That's, I'm tired of all this Spotify music. And then uh, in sync is the next one. Eh? Have I done that? No. Eh? In sync. What's in sync? Whoops. I um, better type install in sync. I discovered that. Ah, yeah, a tip I need to remember. That's why I stop. The installation is stopped. You have to do this. What is this? Super Shift T. Qt-config, enter. There is still a bug, bug and the, the people know it and I, I hope they will fix it. But it cannot start in GTK. You first have to go to clean locks, like so, save, and done. And that's why it's, it's put there, so I don't forget to do that. And then uh, a little bug is um, circumvented or it will work. So, we are here, Lollipop, not going to install that, neither is Packly, not going to install it, install it, Skype for Linux, not going to call anyone, but Spotify is going to be important, without music, no, nope. we can't go without it, TeamViewer not installed at the moment, not interested at the moment, as you can see both are compressing, if one of them 
makes a database block, then, well, it won't install, so it's a bit of a bit tricky what I'm doing. But let's see. We are Control Alt. Oops, Control Alt. We are now on 4.11. I will not go to 4.9 LTS, so I'll stay here. So I'll use my virtual box. I will use this version to have it. So InSync has been installed, that's great. By the way, if you're using InSync, in -sync, you would know, of course, but just type InSync start. I'm not going to do that because it's going to start up the uh, website, the browser, and then ask my login and all that. That's um, explained in another tutorial for you guys. But the virtual box should go in. And then. We are at kernel 11. Aha, uh -huh, Spotify is installing. Let's wait a little bit before I press enter. Oops, not that enter. This enter. So, this is VirtualBox. Also explained on Eric Dubois tutorial. What should you install when being on kernel 4.9? What should you install being on kernel 4.11? And here are just the scripts. I need to reboot, he says. No, I'm not going to do that. ZSH, uh, don't use it. Um, we have beautiful termite configurations. 79 configurations to tune and to color your terminal. Termite, this is termite by the way. Check it out, termite. Here it is, termite. So we can make it beautiful because this is the color from Bunsen Labs. The background is the color of Bunsen Labs. So we're gonna make it uh, better later on. Plank themes is um, available, not needed. I have a GitHub for 100 Plank themes and I have selected, I don't know, 15 or 20 best of them and they are included in ArtLab. So normally you don't need it, I, I will not install it. All right. So this is what I call level one. This everybody can install, no problem. This, however, is getting very personal, so that's why I made the name personal. <laughs> okay, so what's in here? Okay, these elements here, every time I have to reinstall an operating system, every time we have a new ISO and I start working on it, I need to make all these, uh, again, all the, all the, yeah, the other wallpapers as well, but the folders here. So I'm going over every item. I'm going to tell you what's inside. Let's do that there. Let's make it so. Let's do it clear. And then, let's go. 600. 600 is, oops, my mistake. Of course, you should open a new window here. Open terminal. So, and now we can find all the scripts you want to run. 600. These are all settings that he's going to check if there is a directory icons if if there's not actually because this is the not he's going to check is there a directory icons true then if not then you make an icon so it's only going to create folders uh, not icons folders but the name icons and that's it so basically it's harmless harmless program co2 is 602 is the same I make a bit longer, yeah. Uh, settings folder, so the things for open box, genie, termite, terminator, yeah, okay, all good. That's what we need. It's probably already there, but it's if it's not, it's important because I'm gonna copy paste personal stuff over that's in here. So if if I'm gonna copy paste stuff, then the directory must exist. So I'm making first the directories and then later on copy pasting but there are in, inside here as well checks if the directory exists if I should forget it it's in there as well now comes the magic this one I love check this out install personal settings bookmarks if I have to make all of these again and again and again bomb so what you don't have what you can get rid of is arch labs arch labs ISO repo just click remove shortcuts or uh, delete it in the original file but this is my way of working so when i move from computer or from version 
then I have still the same elements uh, to the left and I find my things very fast. Okay, that's uh, that. This one is the screenshot thingy. So I want, I just told him now not to save in PNG, but to go in GPG, that's inside here. The personal settings for GIMP, so uh, making a shadow and narrow, stuff like that. Programs I like, I use, I want to keep around. I've now been copied to GIMP. My settings for Sublime Text. And when, the, when, the, when, when I work with it, oops, that's going to be wrong. When I work with it and um, I find more settings, I just save them there. And next time I will have it. Okay, see them a little. Okay, everything is okay. 6 mm -hmm. This is for IT. Quite important. Check this out. What I do is config variety favorites. Okay. Remember. Overwrite. My own config is now inside. My own config is inside. And it's telling me to go to the Dropbox. I have an account on desktopper.co with 500 wallpapers. They're all there for you to take. And what this does is when I synchronize Dropbox, then all the wallpapers will be in this folder. So when I get new wallpapers, they will come from me as well. It will come from Desktopper, which is this one here, but it will also come from my personal collection. So they will be good, you know. So that's interesting way to uh, make sure that you have a beautiful wallpaper. So my own config is now replaced the uh, original config in Arch Labs. 630 is the last number, 640. The only thing this thing does is now add Spotify, it seems. All the other applications have been added already. And again, the same fonts. So the same script as the other one, same fonts. Are going to be copied so if you don't it on the other level then you shouldn't do it here not necessary anyway let's do a quick opening of termites because the next stop is termite i'm going to copy paste my setting oops it's going to be wrong and enter opening ctrl alt there you go this is what arch labs is originally which is okay, which is Bunsen lab look, and this is more an art theme kind of look. This is bluish, you see? So this is more to my likings, my personal preferences, and everybody has his own personal preferences, and this is how I do my work. Maybe you could make also a GitHub, there's a tutorial on Eredubo about making a GitHub, it's not that difficult, trust me. Follow the tutorials step by step, and you're set to go, and you have something similar like this and next time you have to install a new distro and you have your own settings you can copy paste okay that was um, that let's open it once more because next up is neofetch and this thing here is neofetch i'm gonna change that one yes you can too no problem enter ctrl alt this is my setting for NeoFetch. I want, as you can see, the icon is moved. I think it's even bigger as well. Fonts are bigger. I have more information. I have a double row. So all this information, oops, sorry about that. It will be in the background for now, for a moment anyway. So um, that's NeoFetch. Your fetch is changed and then ctrl alt f is firefox just run it once why why do i have to do it well because this other program is going to install something okay i didn't type anything here this program is gonna make sure that firefox with dark themes you still can read in these input boxes so it's a little CSS trick that's copy pasted now inside the Firefox and if you don't have Firefox started, if you don't start it once, you don't have a folder to copy to. That's why quickly I 
I started the Firefox and now it's copy pasted over there. So I can read my folders, files, input boxes, things like that. For instance on YouTube. And then 800. You see this ugly thing up here? The red thing? It's gonna be fixed with this one. But not straight away of course. We are now filming. So it'll do nothing. And the same applies for Sublime Text, which also uh, not so nice. Let's try another menu. Oh, let's try this one. Super F12 or Super F11. And then you type Sublime Text. There you go. You see this icon up here. Uh, the engineers should do something about this. Mr. Software Engineers. Enter. Let's try another menu, Alt F3, Sublime Text, and there you go, fixed, nicer. Those are the programs I want to have, I want to use, so I want to have nice icons for them. And that's it basically. So we have now completed what I call the Nemesis, Arch Labs Nemesis look. So all my personal settings have been applied, and now it's just fun. Now it's just figuring out what wallpaper I like. Uh, maybe I would like a clock up here and a clock there. Or maybe we should change colors again. And maybe should change tint. Let's do that. Um, I don't know. We're now in orange. Okay, let's take something orange as well in tint. This one. Hopla. Yes. And now we have something orange there as well. And that's the idea of um, R2D2. It's steaming. Basically lots of theming, lots of theming and everything actually is, watch it, here we start with theming and this is all together with theming and this is also included in theming. So and Compu of course is also theming and Compositor is really that you need it because you can disable it and then you see why we need it because we can't see through this uh, black thing here now and that's because our Compositor is off, which is content. That's even nicer. So I hope it was clear. The, this is what I do every time there's a new installation. I go um, and install everything. Hope you like R2D2. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and uh, we will launch it here. And it's weekend time. It's Arch Labs weekend time then. Don't forget you got an R2, D2 does have a new desktop environment, i3. It does take some, uh, yeah, how do you say that in English? You must give it a try several times, I suppose, because I remember first time i3 was difficult for me as well. But then again, whoops, then again, um, you're getting an i3 that just works. So the only thing you have to learn now is shortcuts, how to maneuver about, how to quit and, and change and all that. So I think it's going to be awesome and you'll see it's very fast, it uses almost no memory. So enjoy R2, D2 and hear you on the forums and on Google+. Give us a shout. Alright, bye.